Howdy, Mojave D here. I'm doing well. I hope you're doing well, and thank you for um, joining in another joining me in another episode of La Noir. Um, there's been some questions about the picture, the painting in the back. Before we get started, um, that painting uh, was here. The previous owner um, of the house uh, had it, and I insisted on it being put in the deal. You know, and he didn't want to. He wanted to take it with, but I said, "Well, I want it." <laughs> so, uh, just add it to the price, and there it is. So that's the picture in the back. The artist who painted it signed it right down here. Um, and that picture is, is big. Uh, that frame you can't tell in the video is over four feet long and over four feet high. Um, it's a big, it's a big painting and he signed it down here, but I can't really make out the last name. It, it, it uh, it's a P I C H A and it's either R O. So it would be, uh, P Picaro or Picharo, or it's a T Pichato, <laughs> or it's a J, uh, you know, like Pijaro, Pija. Pijaho. I, I think it's an R, so Picharo probably. Anyway, before we get, uh, I want to do an intro uh, to the episode. Um, it's the one on the left, right there, right there on the upper left with uh, James Coburn and Mr. Spock. <laughs> this is before he was Mr. Spock, however. This is 1959, so it's a good five years before Star Trek was on the air. Uh, so that's a very young Leonard Nimoy, and uh, and they're in here. And this is a TV show that Lee Marvin starred in called M Squad. It takes place in Chicago, and he's a detective. And uh, the reason I wanted to kick it off with this is because Mr. Coburn there, his character, and Mr. Nimoy's character, Mr. Spock, the future Mr. Spock. Uh, are arsonists and they're brothers. Uh, Leonard is playing the younger brother to James uh, Coburn's uh, character. Uh, they're brothers, and, but they're arsonists. And so, and here we are in arson with um, with Mr. Phelps. Also, Lee Marvin was a Marine in World War II and a tough guy in real life, a real life tough guy. So I wanted to, uh, so we're going to kick it off with an episode of that. And I also up here, there's going to be a, I hope I don't run into copyright issues on here. I'm saying all this now before I kick it off because you may not even be able to see it. I might have to delete it. Um, but I think if I do it as a reaction video, it should be fine. The reaction to this episode, uh, there shouldn't be any problems. But there's a song in there called Bonsoir Dame or Bonsoir Cher. Actually, it was the original French title. Um... Uh, by Bud and Travis, which was a big hit. It was a big hit. This thing was on, that song was on the radio all the time in 1959. And that's in, it's going to be in here. Uh, so I wanted to show you that. And then uh, the best version of it, though, it was covered later in the 60s by Ed Ames in 1967. Jody Miller, uh, who I had a crush on when I was young and she was young, uh, she passed away this year. Um, I never met her, you know, but I had a, you know, had a, you know, you know, a, a, a star crush on her. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful voice. And she does the best version of it. Um, uh, bon, bonsoir. Dom and Ed Ames does. These two versions are the two best versions. If you want to listen to them, um, it's simply because Jody, Jody's voice is so pure and crystal clear um, she's just, just a wonderful, one of, just a marvelous, marvelous vocalist with like a four or five octave range and she could sing anything. She basically, she mostly, most of her hits, most of her, her fame, uh, came from country, uh, but she could sing anything. And, um, Ed Ames, of course, is one of the greatest baritones of our time. Um, very deep voice, uh, but again, crystal clear voice, great tone. Uh, both of these songs, both of these versions are my, my favorites. I, I like Jody's better because it's Jody. And then, uh, of course, probably the 
greatest baritone of, of our time. Robert Goulet did a, did a cover on it. His is very good, too. Anyway, uh, without further ado, let's jump into the episode. I hope you enjoy this. It is arson. It's an arson case, so I think it fits just fine with what we're doing here. Let's see where we pick up it. M Squad. I will not Starring Lee Marvin. Cram so much in a fire on the west side, fire on the south side, fires all over Chicago. The city was plagued with them. In one year, losses from fire were up $12 million. One factory blazed and spread, destroying a residential block, leaving 500 people homeless. And evidence indicated that several arson gangs were behind the burning. Open the window, shut the window. Not too high, not too low. Okay, real quick on that. So that's the little brother, played by little, by little, by Leonard Nimoy. Uh, I'll give you a little synopsis of what's going on. So he, you can tell there he's resentful of having to take orders from his big brother, played by James Coburn. And uh, he's, uh, you know, he, he's, he wants to take over. He wants to take over the business. And so you get a little bit of that right there, his resentment of having to take orders from his big brother. And this is really an out of uh, a stretch for Leonard Nimoy because he's playing a bad guy. He plays a psychopath. So he's, he plays a psychopath. Now his brother's not, played by James Colburn is not a psychopath. He's just, you know, a criminal, but um, you'll see how it goes on. But Leonard Nimoy is playing a psychopath here and you'll see that. And it's kind of a stretch for him. Is that wide enough to suit you? Not enough draft. Open this one, too. Uh, haven't you soaked those rags enough? Doing a job right as why I haven't been caught all these years. Good job means total damage, total loss, no evidence. And nobody hurt. Don't forget that, Ben. Will you stop making like the big brother? I'm sick of it. Now set the fuse and let's get out of here. Easy now. Now make it snappy. You're turning into an old woman. Come on! I just knocked over a box. What's the matter, Harry? You're losing your nerve? The fuse didn't act just right. Did you fix it like I said? Yeah, I fixed it. I fixed it. That month, I was working on an arson pattern. My name is Frank Ballinger, Detective Lieutenant M Squad, a special detail of the Chicago Police. We were cooperating with the National Board of Fire Underwriters to find whoever was deliberately setting a series of fires. Their arson bureau investigates every fire in the United States involving insurance. The arsonist is smart and highly anonymous. Mostly little guys, petty hoods or the small businessman front. The customers for whom they burn buildings seldom talk. Henry Sellers, one of the bureau's investigators, was waiting for me. Our investigation shows that dress factory fire was arson, just like all the other fires. And you're sure about your figures here on the south side? Huh? 19 last week, all of incendiary origin. What about the owner of the factory, this Mrs. Uh, Borov? She put in a claim yet? Screaming like a banshee for action. For the record, she increased her policy less than two months ago. Well, did you run a credit check on her then? Credit was good when she bought the insurance last year. Yeah. Mm hmm Well, thank you, doctor. I'll let you know about the uh, disposition of the body. Is that the autopsy report? Yeah. Watchman's skull was fractured before he burned to death. Before? Yeah. Well, arsons don't usually kill. Unless they're cornered. Well, it's your baby, Frank. 
Yeah. Is there any way that you can tie Mrs. Borough in with the fire? Nothing so far, just suspicion. This is a professional torch job. Any suspects? Not a single lead. Well, I guess we better start digging, huh? On the chance that... All right, I'm going to do a quick sound check because it sounds like it might be too loud. I'll be right back. Yeah, that's a little loud. I, I turned it down. I tried to turn down the volume on it. Let's see. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be better. Um, O'Rourke, the dead watchman, might have noticed something wrong at the dress back. Here, I'll back it up a second. Job. Any suspects? Not a single lead. Well, I guess we better start digging, huh? On the chance that O'Rourke, the dead watchman, might have noticed something wrong at the dress factory, I went to see his widow. If he talked to her and she remembered, we might have a lead. He had to take that job at Mrs. Boroughs. I understand, Mrs. O'Rourke. Just one more question. Did your husband mention anything unusual that might have happened at the dress factory in the past few months? Unusual? Yeah, well, you know, like people trying to break in or strangers hanging around. No. Did he have any enemies? Tim was a good man, Lieutenant. Everybody liked him. And he wasn't worried about losing his job? No, but Mrs. Boroff did tell him that business was very bad. Has she been to see you since the fire? Not once, but the foreman came around. He said she blames Tim for being careless. Oh, I don't think that's true at all. What's to become of me? I don't want to be a charity case. Well, you'll probably get compensation insurance. Mrs. Boroff couldn't pay her premium last month. Her compensation policy expired. What am I going to do, Lieutenant? What am I going to do? Try not to worry, Mrs. O'Rourke. Thank you for the help. The wife of the murdered man. Well, sure, I'll be around, but a guy's got to be smart, don't he? Ben. Okay, Julie, baby. Okay. Let's say I'm on my way right now. Ben, hang it up. That's better. Now you sound like Ben's girl. I'll see you right Just away. Found out Big Brother's yelling for the phone. The fire. You're the best, baby. Ben, get off that phone. The best. Bye. Why didn't you tell me about that night watchman? I didn't even know there was one. But I ask you to check. A man's burned to death. Now, do you realize what that means? Terrible accident. Accident? In all these years, nothing like this has ever happened to me. You know what they say. When you play with matches... You're making jokes. A man's dead. Are you sure you didn't see him? You know, you're in a real sweat. Aren't you? This is murder. Can't you get that through your head? Forget it. You're just wearing down the enamel. <sighs> is that all you have to say? What kind of a guy are you, anyway? Just the little brother, Harry. Well, I'm calling off the rest of the job. What, and pass up all that money? I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. What's the matter, Harry? You playing with scared money? You scared? You shouldn't have done that. That was a real tongue. slap. This could be a murder rap. Now, we better pack up our things and get out of here. That you, was go, not... you go alone. That was not fake. That was a okay. real hit. Type it like this. To the police, if you want the hottest fire maker in Chicago, talk to Lou Martin. Yeah, this ought to get Brother Harry shook up real good. This is kooky. Why do you want to turn in your own brother? They can't pin anything on either of them. Don't you see, baby? We played it real cool. No evidence. I just want to scare Harry. He scares, he runs. I don't get it. He runs. I take over. It's been on my mind a long, long time. Come on, keep typing. Talk to Lou Martin. Yeah. He's the go-between who sets the deals. Yeah, that ought to do it. Now sign it. A friend. This is wild. What happens if Martin talks? Oh, baby, baby, Martin's a pro. He wouldn't give the cops the right time. Sooner or later, they release him. He leads them straight to Harry. Man, that's all I need. He leads them straight to you. Oh, I couldn't care less. Harry will cover for his little baby brother to the bitter end. An anonymous letter arrives at police headquarters by special delivery. And obviously, somebody doesn't like Lou Martin. Who's he? 
Oh, he's an ex-con. He's got a record a mile long. That's a go between a man out front who makes the deals with the arsonist. We've asked Mrs. Baroff to come down. Let's see if his name means anything to her. We've invited her down for a talk, and she uh, is trying to locate her lawyer. Would you have Mrs. Baroff come in, please? I'll see if we can catch her off guard. I have my right not to answer any questions until my attorney arrives. You've got to let me reach him. Well, there's nothing to worry about, Mrs. Borough. Defensive, isn't she? Well, what is it you want? You've let your workman's compensation policy lapse. I didn't mean to, but I had a bad season. I just forgot that policy. I'm sorry. Well, you've already made a claim on the insurance. Well, the insurance investigators aren't quite sure about that fire. I'm not going to say any more till I see my lawyer. You're quite right. And I'm sure that your lawyer will be very anxious to hear about Lou Martin, too. Doesn't that name mean anything to you? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. You don't want to answer any questions. Is that somebody you arrested? What are you getting at? Have you ever heard of a person turning state's evidence? If Lou Martin's trying to blame me, I'd... Do you want to help us? It'd be all right if that old man hadn't died. All I wanted to do was avoid going bankrupt. You must believe that. You must. Yeah. But your way of doing business leaves a widow without a cent of insurance. Get her statement and then book her. Well, let's pick Martin up. No, wait, he'll keep. He's just the go between. Let's find out who he's working for. All right, that's a good idea. Can we keep Mrs. Boris arrest out of the papers? Well, I think so, for a day anyway. Now, let's locate Martin because I want to meet him as a client. Can you whip me up some good-looking insurance papers in about an hour? Great plan. I can whip you up some beautiful papers in about an hour. Good. Because I'd like to burn down my $30,000 factory. <laughs> Mrs. Baroff told us that Lou Martin hung out at a coffee bar called El Guitar. She cooperated and set up an appointment for me. That's the song. And that's Bud and Travis. for Lou Martin. Lou's around here somewhere. Over there by himself. Well, thank you. Hi, honey. The law just walked in. Ballinger. I had a run-in with him, him once before. She made him. What's up? Lou Martin. He said if anybody asked for him to, to send him over. So the cop asked him to send him over. Something's gone wrong. What does he want with the cop? Maybe it's about your letter. It couldn't be. They'd never meet him here. They'd have picked him up. No sense in wasting any time. I'm sure our mutual friend told you what I wanted. What you want depends on how much you've got. Well, I heard the standard fee was 200. It varies. Depends upon the size of your insurance policy. You got it with you? Factory. This is a thirty thousand dollar policy. It'll cost you five percent. Five percent. That's fifteen hundred dollars. That's pretty rough. So is bankruptcy. But right here. Yeah, I want to avoid that. He's sending him a signal. It's got to be a big fire. Total loss. Can you guarantee that? Who said anything about a fire? Now he backs up. See. Don't look over that way. He sees. He's talking about me and Harry. Talking with that cop. He's got to be selling us out. Otherwise, he wouldn't come on so nervous. I never figured he'd squeal. How do you know he's selling you out? Why would he bring that cop here? 
Nobody can sell me. Nobody. Take it easy, baby. Take it easy. I'll pause for a second and I'll back it back up. You see what's going on right there is... So, Lee Marvin is pretending that he wants his business burned down. He's got a $30,000 policy. And the go-between, uh, who works with Leonard Des Moines and his brother, uh, is going to take it. He's going to take it until he sees Leonard Des Moines act it, you know, put his head down and like, no, 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 something's wrong. So we got two things going on here. It's really well done. They do so much in a 30-minute show. So the go-between, I forget his name, that that um, Ballinger or um, uh, um, Lee Marvin is talking to wants to take the deal until he sees no more. He doesn't know he's a cop. Right, uh, the go-between doesn't know he's talking to a cop. Leonard Nimoy thinks he called the cop in on purpose to um, to rat on Leonard Nimoy. You see what's going on there? Very well done. Um, and they do so much in thirty minutes. They got just a thirty-minute TV show that they got to get done. And actually, the the actual show is twenty-five minutes, and they have five minutes worth of commercials, black and white, no color TV yet. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, stop this, and I'll be recording i'll pick up and we'll back this up i'll be right back all right let me back it up just a smidge and you can see you can see the interplay between what leonard Des Moines' reaction is and and then the um effect it has on uh on the go-between that uh, lee marvin is talking to and then watch how lee marvin picks up on it here how do you know he's selling you out? Why would he bring that cop here? Nobody can sell me. Nobody. Take it easy, baby. Take it easy. If that cop knows about me, he's got to be stopped. Now, before he spreads the word. Stop talking about fires. See? See? I don't know from fires. Why do you think I came here? What did I show you the policy for? I make quick loans. Maybe I can fix you up fast. Can you prove you talk to me about anything else? What are you afraid of? Why can't we talk? We have. You can't prove you talk to me about anything. Now, Lee Marvin, right here, gets a clue. Who did you send over to my table? He asked for you. He said to send a man who'd ask. Is he a cop? I don't know. You kept watching my table. I was just curious to see who the new customer was. That's all. What did you do? Change signals on the plan? What do you mean? I couldn't place you at first, but we've met, haven't we? Oh, have we? But don't get cagey with me, honey, or I'll run you downtown and pull out your racket. Why did Martin keep looking over at you? Why not? And he didn't give me any signals. record at police headquarters, but there was no lead among the men he'd worked with in the past. That's a go-between. Although we thought that he tried to kill me with a firebomb, we put him under surveillance instead of pulling him in. I went back to M Squad. There are no excuses. You shouldn't be here. You always phoned. Quit stalling, Harry. I've come for some money, then I leave town. I can't figure out how the cops found out you were a go-between. They knew in advance, so they never would have used Mrs. Borov to set up that meeting last night. <laughs> Suddenly everything goes wrong. The money, Harry. There's nothing here to encrypt. I told you. I got rid of everything. So Martin's going to get his money in town. And Leonard is going to set his brother up. It's a firebomb in the cabinet. It's a firebomb. Harry Blacker? No, I'm his brother. Harry's in the office. You want him? Yeah, haven't I seen you someplace before? Could be. 
I'm around. Your brother. Are you a cop? Does that make a difference? No. Your brother. Harry, man to see you. Yes, Ben. Oh, can I help you? Oh, is there some trouble? Oh, no trouble, just a few questions. You know a man by the name of Lou Martin? No, no, I don't. Then he's not a friend of yours. Well, I've never heard the name. Uh, this job is done, Harry. What are you doing with this, Ben? This belongs in the file. You sure you don't know Lou Martin? Now, watch this. I told you no. He was seen coming in here just a little while ago. Well, I've only had two customers this afternoon. One was Fred Kingston, the other one was Sam Wall. <laughs> Picks Nobody up else. On it. Well, I've been alone here except for them, and Ben just came in. Acting suspicious. Just like in our uh, game. I suppose you've never seen this before. No. Okay, get your coat. We'll go downtown and talk about it. What for? He's done nothing. What's this all about? Suspicion of arson. My brother! You're out of your mind! Come on, let's go. Wait, I'll come with you. No, Ben. Close up the store. Does he, sir? Hey, this is a frame! I'll get a lawyer. Don't say anything until he gets there. It's a big mistake! Well, that firebomb was found in your store. It's the same type of arson that she used to start fires with. Now, either you or your brother put it there. My brother never had it, and I never saw that thing before. Bomb has a fine mechanism. And be set to go off in half an hour when you're miles away, or instantly. Well, I wouldn't know about that. We got a case against Lou Martin for arson. We're picking him up. And we know that he was in your store today. So you say. Maybe he put that thing in there. But don't blame it on me or my brother, because I never saw that thing before. Then why does it make you so nervous? You know what it is. Every time I thought about the watchman's widow, I swore I'd crack this case somehow. But Blacker wasn't going to be easy to crack. Then his protests about his brother's innocence got to me. He was protesting too much. It made me think. I remembered something and decided to look a little deeper. La chanson de framboise, la chanson de bonne nuit. Different song. That's not the song I want to listen to. Raspberries, strawberries, good wines, and we Will you just sit still and listen to me? I've got things to tell you. Honey, I gotta finish this letter for the boss. He wants to go out tonight. You don't get what I'm saying. I'm on my own now. I'm running things. Harry is out of it. You and me are gonna live it up big now, baby. Yeah? When I see some of the money, I'll believe you. You'll see plenty. I just made my first deal. Nobody helped me. I get 500 for the fur warehouse at Wabash and Keller tonight. Ben, get out. The back way. Where's Ben? Who? Let's not start that routine. He was sitting at this table with you last night. Oh, that kid. Comes and goes. Where do I find him? Well, I don't know. Here, try some of the places on the back of this menu. Good. My boss owns them. Let's not play games, Julie. You've been in trouble before. This time it's real trouble. You know about the murder. Look, I don't want any trouble. Now, watch what happens here. If I could help you, I yes. would. But I don't know any more about Ben than the rest of the kids that hang out here. You know if he hangs out in any of these places on the back of the menu? Oh, you mentioned the, the pink hat. Says he likes the combo there. He's matching the uh, type from the typewriter. I have a letter here, and I think I can prove his type on the same machine that typed this menu. You should have had the M in Martin fixed. What are you talking about? Get your code. You can tell us downtown why you tipped off the police about Lou Martin. I did. Get so you see what happened there? Do you see what happened there? So it, it, this, ha this, was, um, this was something that happened in a lot of, well, TV cases anyway. Like, you know, they didn't have emails and stuff like that to track people with like they do nowadays, right? Where you got to get rid of your emails and your in your uh, uh, you know any any of your text messages, all that kind of stuff can be tracked. Well, back in this day, and you would see this on TV shows a lot of time, a lot of crime TV shows, 
they could match the keys on the typewriter because typewriters, the key, it, it's kind of like a, they have their own fingerprint. Like not, no two typewriters would, would be the same. And in this case, uh, she's got an M that isn't right. That, that's that got a flaw in the M, you know, in the, in the typeset when it, when it hits the, hits the paper and it makes a distinct, unique mark. So they can prove that the letter that was sent to the police was typed on that typewriter. Isn't that cool? I, that is that is cool. That is some cool detective work right there. Uh, okay, let's let's pick back up. I'll back it up just a smidge. Proof was typed on the same machine that typed this menu. You should have had the M and Martin fixed. What are you talking about? Get your code. You can tell us downtown why you tipped off the police about Lou Martin. I did. Get your code. Lieutenant. Get your code. Look, I don't know anything about murder. That note, I, I just wrote it like for a gag. Ben Blacker? Yeah. Where do I find him? I'm not mixed up in any arson. You're in deep enough. Now, where do I find him? Will you give me a break? Let's go. Wait. He went to the fur warehouse at Wabash and Keller. To burn it? I don't know. By the time I'd alerted the fire department and turned Julie over to a squad car team, I'd lost five minutes. I knew of only one fur warehouse on Wabash, and I headed for it. Yes, we could, Frank. Where is he? I don't know. I want to take a look upstairs. Why don't you look up at the north end? Right. Put your hands above your head and turn around slow. You won't shoot. If you do, we both go up. You can't smell the fumes, but one shot in this room will be a furnace. Put that bomb down, Ben. When I get to the door, I'll put it down just for you. Don't be a fool, Ben. There's police all over the place. Let them stop me. You can't. What kind of a man are you? Selling out your own brother. Who sold out? I just wanted to make him run. Get out of town. He was going soft. The fuse is bombed. When Julie and Mrs. Baroff turned state's evidence, the Chicago jury sent Ben Blacker away for life on a second-degree murder conviction. The owner of the fur warehouse joined Harry Blacker and Lou Martin for 10 years Michigan in prison. Avenue. Mrs. Baroff ah. got five. We broke three other arson rings, but we watch for arson every day. No city is free of it as long as some people are willing to do business with the fire makers. Is that?
that, and I will uh, see you in Los Angeles with Cole Phelps on the Arson Squad. All right, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Let's, uh, let's see what we're up to now. A walk in Elysian Fields. Here we come. Our next case. Last case, I'm looking back at my notes, was um, oh, origami, and our suspect. Did we never get a good enough look? House fire, a bad one. At least four Vicks. Get out there and find out what you can. Four. The address is 650 North Hobart. Four. Dang. Uh, let's follow Biggs. They've covered it up. Something I never know how to get out of these places. I'm telling you. Okay. Yeah, I want to make homicide. Everybody wants to make homicide. Uh, you drive, partner. You know the way. You can drive. Yeah, I'm not gonna do any side missions because we took up we 30 minutes. Conversation, Biggs. Okay, fuck it. Forget I. I'm teasing you, Herschel. Tell me about it. New housing development is a couple of weeks from completion. Burned to the ground last night. GIs are ready to move in this weekend. Developers going to have some very angry customers. Before they move in, the GIs. This is um, Fontaine. Fontaine's uh, scheme with the morphine money. Dr. Fontaine. Okay, here we go. <laughs> There's that dang billboard again. <sighs> Taking in the neighborhood. I guess we just go. Oh, this is the coroner. Yeah, we've got dead. You guys better see this. I hope you have strong stomachs. Oh, no. Come on. Morelli, Mike, we recovered a picture of the family. Morelli? Okay. Anything else? To be honest, I just got here, Phelps. Best you talk to Lynch. He's the expert. Morelli. Doesn't make any sense. Why aren't they scattered around like the rest of the debris? I think they've been moved. Ooh. I think someone moved them Ooh. after the explosion and before the fire. Can you explain that, please? I'm almost positive the cause of death is asphyxiation due to gas inhalation. Oh, thank God they didn't burn it. Look at the parts of their bodies that aren't scorched. The coloring around the fingertips is typical. They wouldn't have felt a thing. I think the fire damage is post-mortem. I think someone moved him into this room. Killed him first. After this. Well, it's still asphyxiation. Sense. Why would you run into a burning building? They wouldn't. They were... Well, I don't know. Goodness. Uh, what are they doing? The prayer effect is from the fire. The muscles and tendons contract. Uh, okay, let's get away from that. What, what, I just got a vibration. Family picture. You ever think about how many people have died in this world and how big heaven would have to be to accommodate them, Biggs? No, I have not. Show some respect. It's our boy. I think he watches the fires. I think the Sawyer fire went wrong. Okay. So what about the guy we have in jail, Phelps? We got the wrong guy. That doesn't explain Again? why he ran into a burning building. 
What would make anyone do that? Guilt. For the fires? For his mistake. This guy wants to burn houses, not families. He expects the houses to be empty. He was trying to redeem himself. He probably thought they'd be happier together. You are one very disturbed individual, Phelps. I know you had it rough lately, but you should start to compartmentalize your thoughts. <laughs> Big Could be touchy. Right. Can you come up with an alternative explanation? I'm sure, it's the same guy. Are you telling me that some son of a bitch murdered these people, the whole family, and arranged them here like Cupid dolls? God, this weird. Might fit, Cole, but I don't think we could ever prove it. There's very little evidence. Oh, gosh. Evidence! Oh, Biggs. Albert, check out the hot water system. Make sure we're dealing with the same M.O. Sure, Phelps. I'll get back to you. Leave the rest to us, Cole. Wow. You better find out what's eating Biggs. Yeah, Biggs is, uh, very touchy about something. Uh, well, uh, we got enough here to be upsetting. Well, we got A and B. We need a C. We already did this, right? We did B. Yeah. Uh, we need to find a... Where's C? Oh, I don't want to look through the house. Well, we got... Ah, man. Yeah, that's a... He makes a good point. Why would they... Why murder him? I mean, what's up with that? Morelli... Why is that name ringing a bell? Uh, well, we uh, he, well we were instructed to uh, uh, calm down our partner. Uh, Biggs uh, had a very um, whoops I got a vibration. Oh baseball. Probably nothing. Yeah. Just to uh, rub it in that uh, well, how tragic uh, this is. Uh, whoever is doing this um, needs to be um, punished the full extent of the law. Okay, cutscene. Biggs is not. So something finally got to you. You want my help, pretty boy? You got it. All right. You keep riding me, and you won't be pretty much longer. Uh-oh, he's tough. We can get this guy, Herschel. You think you've seen everything, Phelps? I was with the 2nd Marines at Bella Wood. The oh. things that went on in that farmhouse. My own guys, on fire, screaming for a way out. World War I. Okay. You're not gonna get this guy. There's gonna be no photos and no citations. We're gonna kill this miserable fuck. Okay. And the story. You get this? Yeah, I got it. Wow. You remember the list from the travel agent? Sure. The Morellis were winners too. Okay. Their name was on that list. Right, that's where I saw the right. name. We should take a look around. Uh, I'll go across the street. Okay, I'll try this side. All right, Biggs. I really like Biggs. Okay, so. Let me pause and, and um, I got to make notes. Um, wow. So, um, uh, so Biggs' reaction is because he, you know, uh, from the war and what he said about his men or the men he was in the, the squad with, uh, very understandable. Uh, and now he is, uh, he is, uh, transitioning from arson to, um, he wants to be, a just an arson investigator from, from being just an arson investigator. He's ready to, he's ready to do some, uh, homicide police work now. All right. Smoke them if you got them. I need a quick break. I need to write some notes down and, uh, get my thoughts together on this it's very interesting the way they put that billboard up on the background when uh, Biggs was re recounting and remembering um, that event from the war and the screams of the men who couldn't get out of the farmhouse and in the background we've got the uh, urban development people back there man we've got some murderous murderous people we're dealing with here of the worst kind all right man smoke them if you got them i'll be right back 
Okay, I'm back and I've got my notes caught up here. Uh, uh, I was thinking when I was out there outside, um, that actor, you guys told me the actor playing Bates is the same guy that played Joshua, the burned man in uh, Fallout. And uh, I need to get back to Fallout too. Um, also, uh, Fallout New Vegas. Anyway, um, same actor. He's really good. He is really good. And it's interesting that uh, that he was the burned man in Fallout New Vegas, and now he's on the arson squad, isn't it? That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's an interesting uh, thing. Uh, anyway, side note. Um, so... We found uh, clue A, clue B. We need to look for a C and a D. Um, and uh, these people we're dealing with are just really, really evil. Um, so it, it, we've got to get to Fontaine. So uh, Courtney gave the morphine to um, Fontaine, if, if I, uh, as you recall. In previous episodes, uh, way back, and Fontaine was going to use the the money from the distributing the, the morphine uh, to build houses uh, for GIs, and they are, and he's involved. We got to get to Fontaine, but we got to get to this Leland cat. This uh, what's his last name? Uh, Monroe. He's a, he's he's filthy dirty, uh, and then there's the uh, everyone with the Gulliver Travel Agency and sending these people out out of town is what they want to do, but the people aren't always out of town and they're getting killed in these fires, these arsons that they're trying to force these people out so they can get their property on the cheap. This is really foul. Really, really foul, man. Um, the people involved in this, Fontaine, Leland Monroe. Uh, so we got to get to them. But first, uh, we... I haven't done this for years. I haven't done this for years. So, yeah, he's back. He's with us. You don't look like a fireman, son. You... A neighbor? Well, we'll get to you in a minute. He's all uh, white. They want me to talk to the neighbor. But uh, we need to find if there's any more clues where we're at. Fire hose. Uh, we need to find a, um, a box. Where's the blue dot is, oh, he's talking to the neighbors, our partner is. A, new, a newspaper? Housing development Burns, ex-servicemen irate as GI houses raised. What? Five more dead in North Hobart Boulevard blaze. Rancho Escondido on Fountain Avenue left in ruins. So wait a second. So this is a major fire. The whole development? Uh, the GI houses? Why would... Okay, now I'm confused. Why would Fontaine and um, Monroe burn down their own houses? We, what are we dealing with? Oh, we got a cutscene. How did you get my number, Ira? At first, I didn't understand. Ira? You. But now I do. I'd like you to come back to the clinic. I'm helping other people now, doctor. I think you are confused. You haven't been to the clinic for weeks. I'm not confused anymore, Doctor. I'm helping people be together. This world is only temporary. We'll all be happier in heaven. Why don't you tell me where you are and I can come to you? I think the fire should end now. They have served their purpose. He's nervous. He's oh, looking the out the window. The fire's only beginning, Doctor. After the fires, everything will be beautiful and clean. Oh, my gosh. Everything Oh my. I can see my purpose now, Doctor. Oh boy, who is this and guy? And you helped me to find it. Oh. Yeah, 
he's nervous. He's looking to see if the guy is out there gonna kill him. Okay, that kind of throws a curveball in my newspaper. Ten of thirteen. There's three more to go. Okay, we need a. Are we looking for a a, a box? Uh, uh, there we go. C. Is that C? My brain is going. Uh oh. Looks like the same model. Varley. Do we have him? Uh, I mean, because we. Oh, what is, is that's downstairs? I got another thing here. This is the flashpoint. Heater detonated with enough force to expose the foundations. Holy. Ah. Uh, the basement. Ah. Uh, that's how we get there? Ah. Uh, the doghouse. Ah. Uh, swing set. getting any vibrations ah uh, my head is spinning right now I'm thinking 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 we need a um, I don't know what we need I don't even know what I'm looking for now my my brain is going 100 miles an hour here uh, So this guy, because I'm thinking it's Fontaine, but Fontaine is kind of, he's created a monster. But Fontaine is guilty of sin on all of this. And I'm not getting any, uh, any kind of vibrations here. Ugh. Okay, um, I'm just reading my notes. Um, I'm think I'm trying to think because I made the notes. I had a theory, and now. I don't know. I don't know. Um, what's he looking at? Is the game trying to help me out? I just don't know. So we didn't get a um, regulator. Is still talking to the neighbors. I guess we need to go talk to this other neighbor. We did the paper. This other neighbor is white. He's got a white dot, so they want us to talk to him. Did I miss anything on this side? I kind of I didn't get any vibrations. I mean, I walked it. Uh, let's talk to the neighbor. Just some debris from the explosion right there. Talk. LAPD, can you tell me anything about the fire next door? Terrible luck. Imagine after having won that weekend away. What's your name, sir? Foreman. Dudley Foreman. Oh, we're going to talk to, we're going to question. Uh, Morelli Fire Witness Report. Did you see or hear anything that might have... Look, 
We were asleep when we heard the explosion. Cut me off like that. I wasn't quite finished. That was suspicious. Cutting him off like that. I mean, it wasn't even done. This guy needs a dose of bad cup. Mm, I don't know. Why would I go back up? Notebook. Bodies moved. Family photograph. Water heater weekend away. Uh, indicating. Yeah, okay. But this character, uh, bad cop. I need. I'm gonna get tough on you. You didn't like Morelli, did you? Some neighbors you get along with, some you don't. Guess they should have sold up. What? what? Do you mean? They're knocking down all these old houses and building a new subdivision for GIs. Which Morelli is gonna burn down. Difficult. Uh, planned demolitions. You said someone is knocking these houses down. Elysian Fields. You must know them. They're billboards. Yeah. All that all Monroe the character. Beaming down at you. <laughs> We've had an offer for the house. Did the Morellis want to sell? I don't know. Okay, he looks suspicious. I like I like that smile. He's imitating um, that smile on the billboard. These are good actors. They get such good actors. I'm staying tough on this guy because look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Ah, ah, bad cop. Whatever you thought of Morelli. His whole family is dead. Yeah. They couldn't have all deserved that. I want you to help me here, Foreman. Good, good Morelli job. Morelli was pig-headed. He built the house himself. He didn't well, want to sell. That won't, of course. Stubborn fool was ruining it for all of us. Oh, you know, he built the house himself? His own house? Well, and didn't want to sell? And you're a bit pissed off about that? Uh, promotional travel contest. You said the Morellis had won a weekend away. Is it Catalina Island? Yeah, that's right. First thing I thought after the explosion was, thank goodness they was away. Oh. But then I find out they were still in there. Okay. Who was running the competition? What? I don't know. I mean, you don't know. <laughs> the billboards are all over the place. Bad cop. I need more, Mr. Foreman. Tell me what you know about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. I know nothing about it. I've never heard of them. We get to talk to this guy some more. All a man can do is put in a prayer for the dead. About all I've got to say about it. I do not like the way that went at all. Uh, why am I walking around here? Uh, what do we do from here? Uh, what are you looking at? I'm uh, missing something. I feel like I'm missing something. Why is the newspaper just laying over here? I'm going to make another trip around because I feel... Like I'm missing something. Uh... Actually, it's just that because I'm confused. Bushes, something. I didn't, I, 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 I wasn't done with this guy. Yeah. All a man can do is put in a prayer for the dead. That's about all I've got to say about it. Well, I guess I am done with him. Won't be anything over here. Um, I guess we go to our partner and uh, any of this stuff. I'm not getting vibrations on any of this. Just 
check in the back one more time. I didn't. I kind of went fast through the back. Anything? Any vibrations? <sighs> Mostly, I'm just stalling while I think. Um, this has got me because um, it's thrown my uh, theories off. You know what I mean? I don't want to go back in that house. Did we check all of this debris? Yeah, we did. There's nothing vibrating. We can't go in that way. All right, we're done here. Uh, okay, we've got everything we could get off of that. our partner I guess they want me to go talk to my partner what do you think we need more from the neighbors Cole keep working them more from the neighbors I didn't get everything from that guy did I get a wrong answer did I did I do something wrong with the neighbor Show's over. Keep moving, all of you. We need more from the neighbors. Like what? Where is Biggs? He's still across the street. you get bigs you need more from the neighbors Cole keep working them. all right fine. okay we got to go talk to this guy some more I don't see any other neighbors out is there something over here he won't talk to me anymore Moved. All a man can do is put in a prayer for the dead. Uh, what did I do wrong? I am missing. Something. That's just a shovel, a toy. I, I don't know what he wants me to do with the neighbor. He won't talk to me. What am I supposed to do with him? I mean, what am I supposed to do? I can't, I can't kick, I, I can't kick the next uh, part off. Um, did the game glitch? Is it was he supposed to talk to me some more, and and he and it won't. from the neighbors oh, I want to I don't want to go in there okay we did this um 
There isn't much I can tell you right now, Cole. Ah, this one, I think I've seen it all. Did I miss something here? It's not let me interact. Um, I, I don't... We can't progress. I can't progress. He wants me to talk to the neighbors. I'm looking at, the, I saw that white thing on the ground. I thought it might be something. He wants me to talk to the neighbors. And I don't know why. Something over here. I can't see anything. I mean. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, why is that exposed? And why is this all? Oh, uh, was this a house? There was a house here that they leveled. Birds flying, a mattress, a trash can, but no vibrations. Oh, my partner came over. I'm stumped. Ideas? We need more from the neighbors, Cole. Keep working him. I can't work him anymore. Okay, so they're telling me, the game is telling me I missed something. Dang it. Uh, uh. Work the neighbors. We got the, we got the paper. I don't need to go through that cutscene again. What else could there be? I mean, the neighbor won't talk to me. Did I mess up? I messed up. All a man can do is put in a prayer for the dead. <sighs> but all I've got to say about it. You're still white. Um... I know nothing about it. I never heard of them. I need more, f Mr. Foreman. Foreman. I did something wrong. Um, or... Um, I'm stuck. I mean, it won't let me go anywhere. It won't let me go anywhere. I got a vibration. Hold on. Whoever he was, he was wearing boondockers. I would know that imprint anywhere. Yeah. Okay. And these? Someone was keeping watch. Calderon. Looks like they were here for quite a while. Cigarettes. It looks distinctive. Okay. Okay, so I missed that. So somebody was here. Now! Suspicious activity. Did you see anyone hanging around the Morelli's home prior to the explosion? Jeez. Nope. Can't say as I was looking out, though. Okay, he's telling the truth. Good cop. Did they have anyone working on the house recently? I got man. the wrong Should answer. I got the man. wrong... I... I doubt it. Why would they bother with these old places? What with the redevelopment coming up? Thanks for your time, Mr. Foreman. Two of sure. four. 
hey, if you're interested, I have one of those competition flyers in the kitchen. I missed two. I, I got two things like. wrong. That would be great. Okay, okay at least hold. we're advancing the story. Things. What did you pick up? Hold a piece of paper. It looks complicated. Japanese call it origami. Can I take a look? Sure. Paper crane. There's a legend about them. You fold 1,000 of these and you get a wish. Yeah. We went through it. There was a phase we went through. Uh, we, were, we, were, we all were making origami. Uh, the girls were really good at it uh, in school. All the school girls, where I went to school anyway, there was, everybody was doing this for a couple of years. It was a fad. Everybody was making origami. I learned how to make some. Okay, further investigate. Hey, don't break it. I'm not. I'm unfolding it. It looks like a waybill or a flyer. For what? That guy. For this the Legion guy. Fields developments. Yeah, we gotta go see him. New location. We're gonna go see you, Mr. Munro. He is a snake. You just look at that smile. Now what? Oh, I see you already have one. Dang. When did the flyer arrive in your mailbox? They've been arriving for weeks. This one was in the mailbox when I got home from work yesterday afternoon. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, okay. I can't do anything with it. Uh, building a better caliber. Oh, this guy, that smile. What a snake. Uh, you can just, can't you just feel it? In his, why, why did he take off? And why do we have a call box? Uh, I'm supposed to call. Uh, phone is right there. Okay. I'm not sure why I'm calling. Yeah, I, 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 I swear, this town is going straight to hell. <laughs> so what's going uh, on? Okay, let's see why we're calling. I don't know. Why, why, I don't know why we're calling. I need an address for a property developer. Elysian Fields okay. Developments. Okay, perfect. Mr. Monroe. The address call. is 748 uh, North Oxford Avenue, Wilshire. Anything else? Messages, please. You have a message. Contact Captain McKelty immediately. Thanks. Can you put the through operator? Of course. Here you are. Commander? Elise and the Morelli Farm. We're about to go and visit Elysian Fields Developments. You're about to do what? Leland Monroe? He's a personal friend of the mayor oh, and the chief. No. Are you out of your mind? I'm warning you, Phelps. Commander, we have a line of inquiry. You have something you bring it to me. You're hanging by a thread, Phelps. Why? Do you understand? Yes, sir. Good. Have a report on my desk today. Kelty has warned us off over a leisure. Makes sense. It's a dead end. We should oh. check out Rancho Escondido. You know the place? Sure. Corner of Fountain and Wilton. Let's go. Wait a second. Ah, hold on. Let me make some notes. Uh, I'm going to pause and make some notes and uh, think, and I'll be right back at you. Why did he call us off of Monroe? That just makes me want to go there even more. Take a break. I'll be back. Okay, I'm... I don't know what the game's doing here. I mean, I know what we should be doing, but it wants us to do something else. Okay, partner. Um, let's let him drive. Let's see what our drive options are. Rancho Escondido. Hidden You're ranch. behind the wheel. All right. Where to? Well, we've been called off of this. We've been warned. Our partner says, let's go here. Let's go here. 
incomplete Elysian housing development destroyed by fire. So I guess it does make sense in the game world to go here first. Maybe we can get some more dirt on Leland and then go see him. But we've been told not to go see him. I don't get it. Shame about Jeff. The arson desk has been trying to nail that son of a bitch for years. He's still in custody, Herschel. Want to bet? Well, he kicked him loose already. Can't hold him for misdemeanor cigarettes and matches. Oh, that guy. So they're, they're trying to... Try to mm, what's going on? <laughs> Rancho Escondido. You know, there are times when you really miss a nightstick. There's more religion in the end of a nightstick than in a hundred cathedrals. What's that all about? Why would you say that? We've got an angry mob. I'm not mob. gonna tell you again, sir. Don't tell me when and how I can come and go on my own property. It is not. This is safe, America, sir. dickhead. Now step back, or I'll lock you up for Smart a fray. Son of a hey! Hey, come on! Oh there. no, we're gonna fight. That's done it, Paul. We're gonna have to pacify these poor sons. Oh, that's Why are we fighting these guys? Oh, another one. You right. It's tough. Either that or I hit like a girl now. Okay. Why did we do that? Good thing you showed up when you did, detectives. Those folks were baying for blood. Okay, then. Let's see if there's anything left to take a look at. Why did we... So these, those were the GIs and they're angry. I don't blame them for being angry. I don't, I mean, you can't be punching a cop, though, but what are we doing here? What are we looking for? Oh, okay, we're looking for a, um, um, <laughs> the game's going too fast for me. We're looking for a, um, a box that went boom. I guess, I don't know, I can't go up into the house. I don't, uh, I don't see anything. Um, I can't go up into the house. I don't see a box. Oh, I got a vibration. For what? Vibration. What are we looking at? A to further investigate. Mortar is like dust. Is that Poor cement fire? quality. And expect some shrinkage in the heat. But it looks like the cement barely adhered to the brick. Huh? Doesn't appear to be any wall ties either. This thing looks like it was built on the cheap. Um. 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 Built on the cheap. If we're paying a visit to Elysian and ruining my career, let's bite the bullet and get on with it. Okay, now he wants to go to Elysian. Ruining your career. Is that, can I bend down and look in there? So we've got, built on the cheap, they're cutting corners. Okay, why? I can't find a box. What started this fire? Uh... Our partner wants us to go to Elysian now. So basically, listening to him, we came here first. Not getting any vibrations. We're not getting a faulty uh, uh, 
Well, I guess that was it. I mean, getting it on one, uh, they're all going to be that way. Okay, so I don't get it. Why would they build on the cheap? Why would they cut corners and um, burn it down? Um, insurance? Well, it looks like our partner is ready to go. He's in the car. Is he in the car already? He is. <laughs> All right. Uh, where is it? What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, they're telling the, telling us what to do. Uh, where are we going? Uh, I should have a flag. Oh, I, I won't get the flag until after I pick it, huh? Well, there it is right there. Um, all right. Well, <laughs> all right. Uh, you drive, Mr. Biggs. You can drive. And where exactly are we going? We're going to ruin your career, according to you. Elysian Fields Development Head Office. And I am so confused. <laughs> Cutting corners. Build on a cheap. I couldn't find a hot water heater that blew up. Um, I messed up with the neighbor. Uh, well, he knows how to build because this one isn't built on the cheap. Detectives Phelps and Biggs, LAPD, to see Leland Monroe. Do you have an appointment? With a police lady. We don't need an appointment. I like Can I tell him what I it's like about? You. It's an official investigation. There are two police officers here to see Mr. Monroe. Send them through. And that's our cue. Thanks, ma'am. Yeah. He knows how to build. So why Can is help this? you, gentlemen? Oh, we got a second one. A I'd second. like to speak to Mr. Monroe. I'm afraid he it's has impossible. two screeners. Mr. Monroe's schedule is booked weeks in advance. Oh, not for us. Cut to the chase, sister. Is he in? I'm not at liberty to reveal that officer. So he hired you for your intelligence? I find that offensive. You have every right to. This is getting us nowhere, miss. Encino. I like our partner. Would you like us to return with a warrant? That won't be necessary. There. Though. Come into my office. Evil personified. You like a cigar? No. Drink, boy. Sure, I'll have a scotch. Biggs. Biggs. <laughs> I'll have a scotch. Why am I looking at this? Because I want to. I want to pick one out. I see. Do, do I like any of these? Ah, uh, not really. We're investigating a series of domestic fires, Mr. Monroe. Terrible, boys. Mr. How can Monroe. I help? Elysian linked to Elysian linked to arsons. Yeah, he just looks bad, doesn't he? All right. Elysian Fields and Suburban Redevelopment Fund flyers keep turning up in the vicinity of the fires. They're turning up all over town, boys. Can you imagine the current demand for housing? So that's your explanation, Mr. Monroe? Coincidence? Explanation? Why, what's to explain? I advertise on radio and billboards for buyers, and I advertise for sellers using waybills. Oh, I want this guy. Bad cop! We found a family burnt out in their home. Another house burned to the ground. Another Elysian Fields flyer. Our information is that they didn't want to sell. Get it. Are you saying that's something to do with me? Is that your point? Yes. Oh, it is. Every time we find a family barbecue, we find one of your flyers. Is that good advertising? 
Okay, I want I want this guy. Uh, I want this guy. A promotional travel contest. What do you know about a competition for families to win free vacations to Catalina Island? My company runs many promotions. I, uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with that one. You lying. S your, your picture's all over them. Oh, all right. Uh, 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 Akeems. Level with me, Mr. Monroe. You know all about the vacation offers. You can believe whatever yeah, you like, right, sir. Yes. You're missing the vital ingredient called proof. Is that right? How about some flyers? Do, did we get a... Uh, uh, do I have... Oh, yeah, we, we do. Right down at the bottom. Dude! The flyers! With your smiling face all over it! Your face is all over the flyers, Mr. Monroe. You know about the prizes, and you're aware that they get given to holdouts. My face is the brand. It's on all our advertising. Did you know that the mayor and the chief of police are part of the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? Do you want to accuse them of murder as well? Yeah, I do. Oh, uh, you know, when you deal with somebody like this, you got to you got to just get right in their face. You know, you got to stand you got to stand up to them and you call them a liar and you use the word liar and you got to use the word murderer. All right. But we're not getting to go there. Local land acquisitions. Yeah, you 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 give give it right back to this guy and you give it back to him harder than he Can gives it to you. Can we speed this up a little? Oh, shut your mouth made offers to buy houses in areas where fires have been recorded. <laughs> Are you suggesting that I'm burning people out of their homes yes. so that I can sell them new ones? Stop. What happens to your plans if a family like the Morellis refuses to sell? Get we tougher, work around Phelps. Get tougher. Business finds a way. That's the American way. Oh. Well, good cop's out of the question. We... I don't have anything to accuse him of, but all right, but then, bad cop Phelps, you better hit him hard. Come on, Mr. Monroe. You expect me to believe that you would build a new development with one of those old piles smack bang in the center of it? Progress is an inexorable process, detective. Those who choose to stand in defiance are usually confined to the waste basket of history. Oh, come to on. answer your question, yes, we would build around them if we had to. Most people see sense. Uh huh. When you uh, bully them, we've got to get tougher. What's Elysian Fields' involvement in Rancho Escondido? It's one of our latest housing developments. It was due to open on the weekend, or was before the unfortunate conflagration. It met with building code regulation. Absolutely. Only the best for our returning hero. You lying. You, you, now we know he's lying. We got the... Uh, lying, bro. There's something out of kilter about that development. Son, I've had enough of you and your fidgety friend. What? There's no way in hell you can prove that my materials were inferior. It's good acting, the fidgety friend. Oh, yeah, there is. Right here. Hit him hard. Hit him hard, Phelps. Don't be soft on this guy. I'm no expert. But I think we'll find that the bricks being used on those houses are undersized and the mortar is faulty. And there's no wall ties connecting the masonry to the frame. Every building is built to a budget, boys. Those buildings were inspected and fully insured by California Fire and Life. Investment of that magnitude demands it. Do you think that they'd vouch for the buildings without examining them? The arsonists. Do you have any suspects? We aren't at liberty to say. I didn't think so. Wait, where's this going? Come here. The We're not done. I use for waybills. Do you suppose there could be any of them? I have a list of their he, names. He is, he's evading. That would be very helpful. And we're letting him evade. Glad to hear it. Why are we letting Always this guy... happy to help the LAPD. My secretary will provide you with that list. Did you know that I'm on the board of the pension fund threat that's a threat he just made a threat glad to be of help officer 
Oh, sh you know what? I want to. Can we draw our gun? Can I punch this guy in the face? Can I swing? It won't let me swing. It won't let me do anything. I tried to swing. I tried tried to throw a punch. Ah, uh, well, these look a little nicer. Oh, I kind of like this one. Uh, yeah, I like the two, uh, or, or is that two different houses? Oh, that's two different houses. Never mind, I don't like that. I thought it was one house, and I like the two wings going up the front. I'm pissed. Uh, this guy is pure evil, and he just threatened my partner with his pension. So my partner has been working on the, you son of a gun. He's been working on the force for 25 years or so when you just threaten his pension. What's the story? Any of these names ring a bell? Ashworth. Uh, Petro, uh, Chapman. Herbert Chapman, that's the, uh, that's Herbert a guy. Chapman is on this list. Uh, he's not a, he, Find the phone. We need to know where we're at with Chapman. Uh, sure. Where's the phone? Well, Chapman isn't uh, the he. He was a guy that uh, he's a pyromaniac. Did we get closed out of Dingaling's office? We did. He locked us out. Ah, uh, do you have a phone, honey? You know, a secretary without a phone. Um, so. Chapman is just a pyromaniac that was, that was, he, he went over to watch that, that first fire that we were on. Does she have a phone? Your boss is a fine man. Ooh, Phelps, where's the phone? Is it outside? We got to go outside? We got to go outside of a building like this to use a phone. Yeah, we do. Ah, uh, all the way across the street, no less. Ah, uh, I'm angry right now. Uh, I want that man. I want that guy. Phelps badge 1247. How could I help, I Detective? Can you check whether we are still holding a Herbert Chapman? Let me find out for you. He was released this morning, Detective. Uh-oh. I'm sorry, Detective. Not your fault. Can you give me a last one address and put out an APB on the guy? I'll get back to you, Detective. APB will go out over KGPL shortly. All right. Thanks for your help. So, we let that guy deflect. I love your now what? The What's going on with this a game? Face to learn love for me in Phelps. Give me in to see his girlfriend costing his wife and daughters ruined his life buy me a drink Cole no way no not even for oh. that sake. not even for that backhanded you're not gonna ask me why I'm here oh. I wouldn't give you the pleasure we'll get around to it She's in fine voice this evening. I wonder how the commander would feel Save about... Save threats for someone who cares about them, Roy. You're breaking my heart, Cole. You know how I feel about you. Stay away from Elysian Fields. I should have known that you were playing errand boy. You and your doofus partner. You have been warned. Thanks for your cooperation, officer. Stay away. You have no idea the type of people that are involved in that company. I have a pretty good idea, Roy. The same kind of people that sent you here. Your investigation is finished. Homicide will be taking over from here. I've heard we've had a spate of grass fires in the hills that you and that hunchback might be able to handle. Thanks for the drink, Cole.
Did you get the message about Monroe? Yeah. Earl delivered it. You? The Kelty. He started making noises about my pension. Sorry about that, Murphy. We hit a nerve, didn't, didn't we? Right? You into this. Save it, Phelps. Monroe's an assway. And so was Earl. And so was McKelty when it's all said and done. We hit a nerve. Where are we going? KGBL calling 11K, 11K. 11K, go ahead. 11K, last known address of suspect Herbert Chapman is 650 North Kingsley Drive in Wilshire. Roger that, KGPL. 11K en route. Let's go pick him up. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Dang. Okay. Just all kinds of... Uh, uh, I got to think. Curveball's coming around. Uh, give me a minute. We definitely hit a nerve. And we are in... Uh, we are in trouble with the bad guys. But that's a good kind of trouble to be in. Problem is, we don't have the clout. Or the wherewithal. To shut them down. And so we're talking to police chief. We're talking about the. Uh, whoever runs the newspaper. Uh, along with. These construction. And uh, promotional. Uh, things you know. Fontaine and Monroe. And. Um, Anyway, give me a minute. I gotta think. I gotta make some notes. I gotta re. I gotta reconfigure my theories. Well, my, I think my theories are good. I just the, the game isn't allowing us to uh, stomp out the cockroaches. I'll be back. Take a break. Well, I guess you fought at Sugarloaf, didn't you? I did. But I don't like to talk about it. You come across a guy called Jack Kelso out that way? You know Jack Kelso? He's an insurance investigator over at California Fire and Life. Our paths cross from time to time. For some reason, seeing you makes me think of him. Has uh, Jack spoken to you about his experiences on Sugarloaf? Or the rest of the campaign? Jack keeps stung just like you do. I know what it feels like to get back from conflict. You gotta respect that. Um... I forgot where we were going. I thought we were going to, uh, we allowed what's his name to deflect to, uh, Chapman, the guy that got out. Now, I don't know where we're going. I don't have a marker. It's all down here. Leeson Fields, the Morelli house. Chapman's apartment. That's where we're going right now. So I think I have to turn around. Um, tell you what we'll do. Set the partner drive. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Okay. No, you drive, sir. I said you drive. Get in. No, no, you drive. Can you drive to this one? Uh, what are we doing here? It's like a Chinese fire drill. Okay. Uh, so the... Monroe deflected. We got this guy's name on a list, but he was just a pyromaniac. I don't think he's... I don't know. We We're need... looking for Herbert Chapman. I'm looking for him, too. I need him to move his car so I can mow the lawn. He's definitely not here. I've been banging on his door off and on for a couple of hours. Yeah, he's out somewhere. Is there some Let's kind of take problem? take a look at the car. Okay, partner. Well, we got a vibration right off the bat. Oh, boy. Let's Bullets. see what he's hauling around. Ah. The delayed fuse that Ethan uses this for. Motive, opportunity, and hard evidence. Uh-huh. But. 
A little too convenient. Ammo. So he's got a gun. 45. We should revise the APP. He's clearly armed. We got the flyers over there. A whole case of them while we pick one up. Definitely gives him opportunity. But <laughs> this looks like a setup, doesn't it? I mean, holy cool. What? There he is. It's Chapman. He's coming oh. out of the laundromat. Okay. Shit, he's seen us. Okay. Cops, again. Run him down. Son of a bitch, he must have caught the trolley. We gotta move fast, Cole. Caught a trolley? I'll call this in, get some cars dispatched. Car 11K calling KGPL. Yeah, just run in the street there, buddy. Um... 11K requesting assistance. Yeah. In pursuit of suspect aboard the 1110 University streetcar. Currently heading east on Melrose Avenue. Advise all Good units. Grief. Suspect is in control of car and driving dangerously. We need a, a roadblock. There's nothing I can do, really. I can't knock it off the road. Stay on his ass, Cole. Don't lose him. Well, that's easy to do. How do we set? We need a roadblock? We need ca uh, How do you derail it? Oh, look at this. Yeah, I'm not gonna... I can't knock him off. Fire truck could. See if he can damage one of the wheels. Might act like a brake and slow the thing down. Are you serious? Don't leave me hanging out here, fellas. Move it in. Hold him tight, Cole. As soon as he ditches the tram, we'll be there to grab him. Look, Cole, the side plate's gone. Get me closer. I think I got a shot here. End of the line, you little prick. Come on, Cole. Reinforcements are on the way. Cease and desist. Whoa. I got you. I didn't have a Looks choice. Like we have our man, Cole. Well done. I'm not so sure. Chapman seemed to have his own. I vendetta. was crazy. There seems to be more to this than a personal vendetta. What are you talking about? Yeah, fires benefit a lesion in some way. I don't see Chapman and Monroe working together. You have a point. The evidence is good for Chapman. Hard to be worrying about his side of the story when he's blasting away with that big 45. Wow. Um. Yeah, I think he was set up. Put yourself at considerable risk stopping that trolley and probably saved a lot of lives. Anyone else but you, Phelps, and you'd be up for a bravery award. Uh, We've had our eyes on that slippery son of a bitch Chapman for as long as I can remember. It's a setup. I couldn't be happier than set to him wipe up. him off the scoreboard. Yeah, no, he's... I hope this puts to bed that crazy stuff you had going about Leland Monroe. No, it doesn't. What were you thinking, Phelps? I was thinking Call correctly. Call Richard Nixon a crook next. <laughs> Nixon wasn't a crook, he just... Now what? Ah, uh, the... <laughs> Throwing away his wife and daughters. A letter from Lou. His insurance policy named me beneficiary. California fire... Oh, this was her friend who died. Do look for Amnesia. The roof that he was working on collapsed. It's a very generous settlement. Elsa, I'd like you to do something for me. I think there's something dirty about Elysian Fields. What has that got to do with Lou? I want you to reject this settlement. I want you to go and see an investigator named Jack Kelso and ask him to make some inquiries about Lou's case. What? 
Isn't this police work? Do you want to find out what happened to Lou? Why would he help this Kelso? Jack won't be able to help himself if he smells a rat. He is a friend of yours? He hates my guts. <sighs> Elsa, we could take this money and let them get away with it, or we could get Jack's help and do something about it. Why not be honest with this man, Cole? He deserves your honesty if you want his help. Believe me, Elsa, I'd like to level with him. I really would, but it's too late. Years too late. What? How can it be over? Uh, all clues found. I got two questions wrong. We didn't do any damage. Chapman takes his motive and any possible ties to Monroe and Elysian Fields to the grave. Was I not supposed to kill him? Um... Yeah, he was set up. Oh, we can't. How could we? Okay, so what just happened? They're setting him up as a fall guy to deflect away from the guilty. Uh, I'm going to my notes here. So, it doesn't make any sense. Uh doesn't make any sense so they put that i think they put the uh the fuse well the, the mosquito coil that that they use as a delay uh time delay for the fuse um in his truck uh the ammo might have already been his he had a pistol anyway but then the flyers put in his truck he's just a pyromaniac that showed up for that first uh uh, fire just to watch it he wasn't handing out flyers i don't believe i think they set him up they make they're making him their fall guy and i shot him it was there a way to catch it to capture it maybe i should have tried to tackle him or something um and uh then phelps goes home with his girlfriend the fool you know thrown away his his family his beautiful family for a very sexy elsa now i know why elsa's on the cover art of the uh, game <laughs> now it makes sense now uh but she gets a settlement now when we first met her she was all broken up and crying over the loss of a friend so i think that's what that all is talking about right there and so now she's getting a, a settlement for his death uh we've been taken off the case I see what he's doing. I see what Phelps is doing. I see what he's doing. So he tells her, don't take this money. Go see Kelso, who works for this insurance company. Because he knows, what he say? When Kelso smells a rat, he's going to go after it. So he is now using... Kelso, who is with the police department, he's with the insurance company to f further the investigation. So he's, that's really smart. He is, he can't do anything and he knows they're dirty, but he can't do anything. But he can, he if he can get Kelso to do his investigating for him, I like it. I can't stop here. Um, and I need to, I mean, this is a long video. But I can't stop here. We can't stop. We got to keep going. I can't believe it ended. I can't believe the case ended like that. House of Sticks. Let's keep going. I mean, this is going to be a real long video. That is really clever of him. Where are we at? This is not the police station. Is that Kelso? Oh, look at her. Mr. Kelso? Sign on the door says, Miss. Elsa Lickman. Dear Miss Lickman, pertaining to the matter of policy number blah, 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 and a sudden death of Louis or Louis uh, Jan Bookwalter, 
I am writing to inform you that you have been named as sole beneficiary. Please find attached a settlement check for $20,000, the maximum payable amount in accordance with Clause 4A, the life... Okay. If you wish to dispute it, and there's a check made out there's to... There's no her. need to come into the office, Ms. Lechtman. If you accept the settlement, all you need to do is sign here. Yeah. Why is that entered in as a clue? What's going on? I don't accept the settlement. What do you mean you don't accept? I think you're pushing your luck, lady. This seems to be a ridiculously generous settlement. A $200 policy with a $20,000 payout? You should... I don't want the money. What do you mean you don't want the she money? I want sexy. to investigate this case. I feel my friend may have been the victim of foul play. Okay. Get my Okay. Let me get the case file. All right. All right. Phelps. I like what Phelps has done here. Uh, press A. Uh, press A. I uh, press A. There's got to be more in these files. Press A. I am pressing A. Oh. Uh, insurance policy number, same number. Uh, while in the employ of Elysian Fields. Okay, so he was um, a carpenter working on the house, killed when the roof of the property Ah, collapse. We know they're using faulty materials. On Tuesday, 28th, approximately blah, 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 Mr. Buckhalter was ascending the roof structure of the property at Normandy Development uh, when a fault in the ridge beam caused it to sag. Witnesses report that Mr. Buckwalter slipped and attempted to right himself by holding on to a ceiling rafter. Okay, but the, the rafter broke? So they're using uh, bad timber as well as uh, uh, faulty bricks. And, oh, wow, Mr. Bookalter fell 23 feet to the ground. His falling weight caused several ceiling joists to snap. That's, they must have been uh, balsa wood or something. Um and these fell inward along with part of the prefabricated... Sounds like your friend took a hell of a fall. ...roof truss. I'm sorry for your loss. Autopsy later revealed his cranium was shattered, probably when he struck his head on the roof beams. A significant internal damage, internal hemorrhage, independent testing of the ridge beam and roof truss was determined that faults in the timber... Wow. Am I supposed to tap on something else? Oh. Against, uh, 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 so this is a, um, the valuation of the house is 3,500. Independent valuation, house and land, 3,500. Insurance. Against loss or damage, not to exceed nine hundred. I don't understand why. Is, why do they want me to tap on all this stuff? So this is Elysian Fields. So his own insurance company. Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? What? Of course not. <laughs> okay, this is this is fun. What basis do you have for your claim of foul play? Bill Buckwalter was a craftsman. I don't believe he would have made a roof that would collapse. True enough, but she she's looking around. She's she's telling the truth there, but she's still okay. So, <laughs> Kelso would 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 just believe her on that and go good cop. But we know that she's there, so there's more to the story. So we got to go bad cop. You want me to reopen this case based on your woman's intuition? That isn't going to happen. Take the money. I've already told you I do not want Ooh. the money. There's something wrong with that house. She is quite a woman, isn't she? Uh, what's your connection to Buckwalter? You and Buckwalter weren't married? No. Then how did you become his beneficiary? Good question. We were... 
family friends. Okay, still not making eye contact. Again, well, we go back, cop. I was going to say something else. But... Case because you come in here walking that walk? Walking that by. walk? I think you should tell me what the hell is going on. Kelso? You really want to know? Yeah. Yes. We were interned together on Ellis Island. Oh. Resident alien Germans whose parents had been killed by Nazis. Oh. You see the irony in that, Mr. Kelso? Yeah. I spent four years there. Four years. Uh, so, okay, but it was during the war, so, uh, you know, overly suspicious, overly cautious, erring on the side of error. They inter So Jewish, German, German-Jewish, Refugees uh, from the Nazis, but yet uh, they interred her, they kept her at Ellis Island for four years with Mr. Bullcoulter. Uh, motive, okay, why do you, yeah. So the roof collapsed, well, accidents happened. Motive. What exactly are you trying to achieve here, Ms. Lichtman? Exactly what I said. I want that building thoroughly investigated. Well, well, that part is true. Good cop. I'm intrigued, Ms. Lichtman. I really am. But you're going to have to give me something if you want me to get involved in this. There is a conspiracy surrounding Elysian Fields and the new houses they are building. I believe your insurance company is involved. That's pretty heady stuff, Miss Lichtman. Uh -huh. Flimsy, but heady. Uh huh. I've told you what I know, Mr. Kelso. What are you going to do about it? I like it. All right, Miss Lichtman. One final question. Yes. What's your address? Is that the usual? Is, he... is there anything usual about this case, Ms. Lichtman? The address is on the letter, Mr. Kelso. She is so cool. Isn't she? The address. Not the oh, phone no. number. Oh, you dog. You dog. Kelso. Kelso. What are you up to, boy? And she gives a number. Uh, you know, Phelps, Phelps, you got yourself tied up with a uh, femme fatale. Oh, walking that walk. Do I get fries with that shake? Mr. Benson would like to see you in his office, sir. <sighs> Upstairs. Upstairs? Come on, I'll walk you up. Hold on. I'm getting a... Why am I getting a, a vibration? Oh, her phone. I'll be in touch. Okay. Well, I'll take it. Let's pick up the phone number. Very nice. Okay. Why did... Okay, why... Why am I getting... Why am I doing this? Um, did, there, did I miss something? It made me sit down. Okay, we did all this. Uh, we're good. What the heck? What did I knock that over for? What the heck is going on? Is there something else I was supposed to do here? This is really taking a, a, a fun, fun twist. He refuses to accompany me to church. I knew it wasn't safe around here anymore. You see, Kelso, uh, <laughs> didn't give me your number. Mr. Benson, you wanted to see me? Oh, yes, Jack. I'm just trying out a new putter. I noticed Elsa Lickman in the lobby. Oh, how That's do you the know her? Thing, Mr. Benson. Call me Curtis, Jack. This is California. Like I said, Curtis, this is a very strange case. How so, Jack? That lady, Elsa Lichtman, is refusing a 20 grand payout. So how does he Elsa know Lichtman her is name? hardly a lady, Jack. She's okay. a jazz musician. Plays at the Blue Room in Hollywood. You are, you are a jerk. She's a fine pair of lungs, now that I think She's of it. She's the of this guy, no, Lou no. Buckwalter. Oh, no. He was killed in an industrial accident working for Elysian Fields Developments. You know Elysian? I'm familiar with Leland Monroe. We uh -huh. move in similar circles. Well, we gotta Ms. get Lichtman's to him. making some pretty serious accusations. She says the case stinks and that she's a very happened. highly strung girl, Jack. Strung out might be a better way to put it. 
It's a pretty generous payment, Curtis. I think I should look into it. Is there anything wrong with the paperwork, Kelso? No, there isn't, Mr. Benson. I didn't think so. Pay the case out and get her off our backs. I can't make her take the money, Deal sir. with it, Jack. Do your fucking job. Do well. I have to do everything? No, sir, you don't. Fine, Jack. Fine. You know I have the greatest confidence in you. Well. Thanks, Mr. Benson. Mr. Benson. So Your now, Mr. Kelso? Thanks, kid. Investigate the Elysian Field site. Uh, press Y to skip to your destination. Uh, okay, I guess. Uh, does that mean he'll drive or do I have to drive? <laughs> yeah, he'll drive. Ah, hold on. This is going too fast. Uh, I mean, too many things, too many changes. Things are changing so dang fast. Okay, we were here before with Kelso and uh, Biggs, and we didn't get much. What are we going to get? Okay, now what? Uh, I need to pause. I need to make some notes, uh, or I'm going to get confused. What do we have? Delivered items from uh, hardware. That's not how my pop taught me to mix it. Mix what? Someone is cutting corners. What? What are you talking about? Oh, Portland Cement ordered two tons. For 42 bucks a ton. Base built sand, eight tons. They're cutting an aggregate, 16 tons. So we got 16 tons of aggregate. We got eight tons of sand against two tons of cement. Oh, yeah, that is not the way you mix it. Uh, that's so that's why he said that. This is from Frank Osterman. But I need to pause. Can, well, let me pause. I need to make some notes here. Oh, dead. Um, <sighs> Kelso, you know, the type of woman that you threw your family away from. I mean, she's sexy as all get out, but um, oh boy. Um, sounds like maybe Mr. Benson even had some uh, intimate dealings with her. Um, so... All right. Um, wow. Uh, okay. I, I don't really have anything to write down. Um, I was thinking. That's all. I do have a lot of thinking to do. Okay. So we have proof. Got anything else on the desk? How about, I want to I want to see that invoice underneath or the letter underneath. I guess we can't. Um, well, he automatically walked to the other desk. Is there some? Oh, okay, here we go. Two things, or, or not? Order of demolition. The city of Los Angeles pursuant to Section One Ninety One, blah blah blah, California Building Code, that any building work. At the Normandy Avenue subdivision associated with the incident of October of 1947. So the city of Los Angeles has issued an order of demolition after Elsa's friend died. Bulldozing and starting again. So there's, so that, yeah, because the investigation uh, said uh, faulty timber. Okay. And this one? Ah. Uh, the only one row. Oh. Man with the grin. Man. Looks like he doesn't like to be disappointed. Delays will not be tolerated. Yeah, he's a real turd. Uh, I want him. Um, okay, I got another desk. No vibrations this time. Okay, so we're in 
with a bunch of dirty, dirty dogs. Um, so now, but, 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 a council's, I don't know. Hey, you just can't be walking around down here. I'm Jack Kelso from California Fire and Life. I don't care if you're from the Vatican. <laughs> Buzz off. I'm investigating the accidental death of a Lou Buckwalter. And you deaf? Do he's I got his fist. On you? Why has he got his fist? Looks like you do. What? What the heck? You're a real asshole. You... Kelso, come on. Come on, Kelso. Come on. I'm pretty I good. I came to see the house where Lou Buckwalter died. You were just about to offer to show me the way. Uh -huh. Out the gate, and three houses down the line. I don't know. This is moving too fast. Don't know what you're for looking me. for, smart guy. There's nothing there. Then I'll poke around in the rubble. Fine, as long as you're out of my sight. <laughs> I can't. Can I get my hat? <sighs> what are we doing? Oh, there it is down there. Collapsed. Uh. we can walk to it. So there's still building. There's a prefab. Okay. Uh, part of it is prefab. So they demolished the house where Elsa's friend was killed. But they're still building others. Now, I am. This this game is. What is going on here? Demolished. The house. place falls down and then they bulldoze it. I just said that. What gives here? Got a marker with a vibration. Uh, what does it say? Not for construction use. Okay. Uh, why? Why would you... Why would you... Oh, there's another flag. Why would you label lumber not for construction use? What else would it be for? What else would you do with it? I mean, it's lumber. Uh, can I look inside? Unless it's like balsa wood, or it's not balsa wood. It looks like, um, I don't know, not for construction. Um, so what is it for? And why would you make, you know, two by fours and four by fours out of it? Another one? That's gonna be the same thing. I'm getting vibration here, but I can't. I can't lock onto it. Oh, now I did. Let's try to piece this together. Oh, why? Uh, okay. What do you got? Keystone. That's not right. Um, one of the murder. Remember the secretary? She was a. Uh, she worked there. That was her whole. Uh, her her whole life. She loved that job, and uh, she even kept. What are we supposed to do? Uh, props. Props! So this is for uh, set construction. Uh, you know. Yeah. Keystone Films. Who gets their lumber from a film studio? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, I so, I mean, <laughs> What's this? What the hell? Oh, crap! Serious! Son of a bitch. I can't see what it says. LT to target him. He's in a bulldozer. Oh, shit. Shit. I, I, I can't. You can't shoot him off of him. I can't shoot him. That's like a tank. LT to... What am I supposed to do? Do I have to run down that pipe ditch? 
Yep. That kind of cutscene makes you go right down it. Run! You son of a bitch! How do I... I was gonna turn around and target him. How do I turn around and target him? How do I get out of the ditch? This guy wants to kill me. You son of a bitch. How do I... Oh, shit. Oh, shit is right. How do I, how do you, I, I'm supposed to shoot him? I turned around and shot him, but that ain't gonna work. That's like a tank. I mean, all he has to do is raise that. I mean, he's got that. I can't shoot him. Unless I can. You son of a bitch. How do I get out of here? Take a rest. We'll go outside and have a smoke break. All he has to do is raise the the blade. I mean, there's he's bulletproof. I mean, he raises the blade. You can't even see him. Of course, maybe that's what we got to do is make him raise up the the blade, and then he crashes himself. I don't know. I'm taking a smoke break. Smoke him if you got him. We'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I got some. Refreshment. Uh, now, and a smoke. And, uh, now, I did see a ladder at the end of that. We almost made it to the end. So I just have to run fast enough to get to the end of that thing. But I tell you what, uh, was that lumber marked not for construction use uh, before or after uh, they found out about it? Uh, even if it was before, I mean, after, I mean, after. And so Elsa's uh, boyfriend or friend at the time, um, I mean, it, it had to be after. They had to mark it after. He because he there's no way you would build a house with that like marked like that. And they got the lumber from a movie uh, set or movie um, uh, 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 production uh, thing where that girl who got murdered when we were in homicide uh deal, trying to deal with the uh the serial killer where she worked but she lost her job because they went out of business so uh anyway um he wouldn't he, he wouldn't do that he wouldn't go up on roof now i i built some sets uh in college uh when i was i was the stage carpenter uh, for plays for about i don't know four or five plays um, you build those flats, uh, laying down, they're, they're laying down on the ground. You don't, they're not weight bearing. Uh, they're not intended for weight bearing. Um, and then you, and then you, you, you pull them up, you know, you don't, you're not going to get up and, and put your body weight on any of that stuff. Okay. So that's beside the point. We got to survive this. So we got to run like hell to that ladder. Yeah, there's no way you, that it would support you. You don't get up on it. You build, if you use that stuff, like I say, you build it laying down. It's it's laying down on a concrete slab. You 
son of a bitch. Shoot at the driver to slow the bulldozer. When do I get a chance to do that? Oh shit, that didn't really work. When do I get a chance to do that? Here? Well, I can almost, I'm almost to the end. There's a ladder at the Investigator down. There's a ladder at the end. But if I stop to shoot, I, it slows me down. LT to shoot. Yeah, see? I, I pushed LT to shoot and I get hit. I just gotta run, I can't shoot. We gotta make it to, <laughs> this is impossible. Uh, I don't know why he stopped running. Um, oh, RT. I got to hold RT down to run. LT to stop and shoot. <laughs> that doesn't make... I don't know. Slow it down? It's a freaking tank. You can't slow it down with a 45. You son of a bitch. a ladder. I can't, I made it to the pipes once. Okay, I gotta get far enough ahead, shoot once, and then run. I gotta get far enough ahead to shoot. Son of a bitch. To aid your escape. Shoot that guy. I won't kill him. Trace at, uh, there's a phone booth, uh, blue. Is this my car? This isn't the car we came in. Did I just steal a car? Okay, let's get to the, uh, let's get to the phone booth. back and, and shoot that guy? He tried to kill me. We're just going to let him go? Well, we're not a cop, are we? Why am I making a phone call now? This game hasn't made any sense for a while. Jack Kelso, California Fire and Life Investigator. I need an address on the Keystone Film Company. Okay, that's why. The address is Wilton Place. Is there anything else? No, thank you, ma'am. So we're going to Keystone Film Studios. They're, uh, they, they went out of business, according to the, uh... <laughs> did we just get a new car? I think we did. Is this what we drove in in? I gotta drive. Uh, does this mean we're gonna get a chase somewhere? If I'm driving, usually if they make me drive. Now why 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 didn't I? Why did he drive himself to these? And now I can't. Ran a red light. We're not cops. We gotta be careful with that stuff. 
Ah, uh, where we going? Ah, uh, hold on. I need to know. Okay, good. Red light. Um, how far is it? Uh, where are we? We are there. We're going that way. So around the curve and take a left on Clinton. Will I get pulled over for speeding since I'm not a cop? Ha! Ah. So, uh, how close are we to the curve? Uh, curve's right up there. Then we're going to pass Maplewood and then take a left on Clinton. Capitol Records presents Marsha Tilton. With her lovely tune, That's My Desire. I'm impatient right now. Uh, what I'm saying is, this whole thing hasn't made sense. Uh, well, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, I understand that we're dealing with these corrupt individuals. Ha! Huh, the police chief. The uh, editor of the newspaper, the chief editor of the newspaper, uh, is the mayor involved? Did we mention the mayor? Uh, then we got Fontaine, and we got Monroe, and uh, these construction company, and uh, and uh, all of this stuff. Uh, I understand that they're okay, so they're doing dirty deeds, and they're trying to cover it up. I understand that part; that makes sense. But um, killing Chapman. And now this, and that guy trying to kill me. And then, uh, Cole Phelps uh, using Elsa to, uh, is this it? To, uh, is this Melrose? Or, uh, well, it is now, I turned. Um, what am I on? Um, I, you see, I'm trying to make sense out of everything that's happening. That is what I'm doing. Where am I? I am on Maplewood. Yeah. Okay. Just around the curve and on the right. I mean the left. Ah. There's a curve. Up the, the curve's up yonder. Ah, uh, uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, um, uh, that's going to be it up ahead, uh, on the left, it's all, it's all, f it's closed, right, unless they reopened it, well, yeah, we got a guard. Hi, Mac. I work for California Fire and Life. I'm looking into an industrial accident. Here? No, not here. At a housing development over on Normandy Avenue. So? I found some lumber over there had the Keystone name printed on it. We've been closed since 41. Never quite made the transition to talkies. The Suburban Redevelopment Fund are pulling the place down. Aha! Know anything about the Suburban Redevelopment Aha! Nix. Nix. Mind if I take a look around? I'm kind of hungry. If someone was to leave a couple of bucks here, I might wander <laughs> okay. down the street and get a give cup of coffee. A, give him a fin. Is there a key to the gate? No. The only guys who go in or out are some delivery guys from Elysian Fields. Oh ho! They're working on a housing development over at Wilton and Santa Monica. You'll have to hop it. Hop it. Okay. So, the guys from Elysian Fields... Hold on, I'm writing that down. The only guys... Who go in and out are the guys from Elysian Fields. Okay. Hop it, he says. Man, I just. Can I do that? Oh, he can. Ah. Uh, look at this place. 
So Elysian Fields is using prop lumber from a defunct... Where am I going? Movie... Oh, cool, a horse. Um, yeah, see, this is the way this stuff is built. It's built on the ground and then lifted up. You don't get your body up on it, but this stuff looks weight bearing. This stuff, all right, I'm getting distracted. Uh, all right. Fireproof warehouse. Where am I supposed to go? Ground back. Here's some lumber. What was that noise? Stage three. It's an old movie lot that closed. This is 1947, so it closed five years to so six years ago. Uh, and broke that woman's heart. Why do I keep hearing? Like stuff falling. Not getting any vibrations. There's stuff written on the wood. There's my car. Sit on the other side. We got to go around to the other side. I'm not getting any vibration. Is that a vibration? I got a vibration. What do we find? So this <laughs> is where their lumber comes from? White pine. Eastern white pine. Frank Osterman again. So they're buying fourteen dollars per pallet. Eighteen. Um, I'm trying to figure out eastern white pine. That's a very light wood. I mean, it's a, I mean soft, uh, soft wood. So this is where they're getting their lumber from, he says. Not getting any vibrations. I want to look at it. Caution. Not for heavy construction. So it is marked. So why would her, if he was a carpenter, a craftsman, as she says, why would he... Even, well, that's got barbed wire on it. We can't jump that. There's that noise again. Why would he go up on a roof? I mean, why would he do that? There's, see what I mean? So many things aren't making sense. A screening room. And it's open. Why would they leave this door open for a screening room? What's this? Gosh. <laughs> Let's Surprise. see what the rich and powerful have to say for themselves. Film canister. All right. There's no film. Wheel should be nearby. Okay, we have a newspaper. Can we, is that going to be a, is that a newspaper? No. Uh, these old, these old things. Uh, I actually use those. Um, uh, we have, <laughs> uh, they actually filmed some of the plays. Um, I don't know why, but, but they did. I got another vibration. wooden pen. Nice one, but it's not a clue. 
Oh, there's the projector right there. So the, it's it's going to be in the projector. Uh, my dad had one of these. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've used these. L to move and A to... L to move? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Flick? Okay, it's, it's not... It, we got to get the speed right. Can I... Fast. We need to... How do we slow it down? That's Fontaine. Okay, let's turn the other knob. That's Fontaine. In a great day for the future of Los Angeles, civic leaders and businessmen joined forces to launch the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. <sighs> the Suburban Redevelopment Fund pledges to speed up housing development for returning GI. Gentlemen, this is Dr. Harlan Fontaine. That's Monroe. The latest investor in the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Doctor, this is okay. Curtis Benson. He's Vice President of Benson. the California Fire and Life. We're pleased to meet you, Doctor. Ray Gordon, editor of the Times. Doctor, District Attorney Don Sandler and Police Chief Warren. Gentlemen, I am delighted to be the DA. In such exalted company. You're making quite a name for yourself, Doctor, amongst the thespian fraternity. I find that those of artistic temperament uh -huh. are often of a fragile mental disposition. It's a short step from miscreant to recidivism, Doctor. Very true. But I think we could all agree. That the City of Angels does rather well basking in the reflection of the motion picture industry. Here, here, and it's something that every sucker getting off a train at Union Station wants a part of. Gentlemen, we're here to sell the American dream, and Hollywood is our greatest advertiser. So, how is your new development selling, Leland? You cannot throw them up fast enough, Ray. And that's part of the problem, Leland. Washington is receiving steady complaints. There's a clamor for public housing. God damn it, Ray. Public housing is tantamount to communism. Now, that's why we fought this goddamn war. I'm telling you, it's reds by the back door. You can't have it both ways, Leland. The new freeways are being built to service all your developments out in the boondocks. They're all being built with government money. The GI Bill is government money. There's a difference. What difference? The GI money ends up in my pocket. I hope you mean right. our pockets, Leland. We're all investors. Of course, Curtis. <laughs> so, when will the freeway bond be passed on? It still has to be ratified. It takes a long time to raise three billion dollars. Hmm. I need to find a game well or a telephone. In a great day for the future of Los Angeles, civic leaders and businessmen joined forces to launch the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. The Suburban Redevelopment Fund pledges to speed up housing development for returning GI. Weird. Gentlemen, this is Dr. Harlan Fontaine. He's our latest investor. Can I need to turn this off? Is it going to play the whole time if I don't turn it off? Vice President of the California Fire and Life. Pleased to meet you, Doctor. Well, I can't Ray turn Gordon, it off. editor of the Times. I can't turn Doctor. it off. District Attorney Don Sandler. And Let's get away from it. Gentlemen, I am delighted to be in So we came in this way. You're making quite a name for yourself, Doctor. That was convenient. But, again, doesn't make sense that they would film that, does it? Does it make sense to you that they would film that? Okay, we got a phone icon in the uh, guard shack. Operator, think you could put me through to police dispatch? Thanks. Putting you through now. This is Jack Kelso, investigator for California Fire and Life. Can you put me through to Curtis Benson, please? Just a moment, please, Mr. Kelso. Jack, how can I help? Do you know anything about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund, Mr. Benson? I've heard of them, Jack. Building new homes for GIs. With green lumber that was used on movie green sets. Green lumber, okay. Jack, are you working the Buck Walter case? Mr. Benson, are you part of the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? 
Jack, I want you to listen very clearly. Call Miss Lickman. Call her as soon as you hang up. Arrange to see her tonight and get her to agree to the settlement. Do it tonight. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Aha. Uh -huh. End of story, Jack. I don't want to hear another word about Elsa Lickman or Luke Buckwalter. So... Can you put me through to Michigan 221? That's Elsa's number. Hello? Ms. Lichtman, it's Jack Kelso. Yes, Mr. Kelso. I've been looking into your case. Yes, and what have you found? It doesn't look good. I need to see you. Meet me at the Blue Room. I work there tonight. I take a break around 9. I'll be waiting at the stage door. Blue Room. We can talk then. Off here to say, Mr. Kelso. I'll just be there saying. Thanks for your help. Uh, she has a sexy voice. Um, I still not making sense. Oh, cutscene to the blue room. Are we gonna see Elsa? That's Kel. That's not Kelso. That's us. That's Cole. You know I'm guilty. So he waves at her, gives her a signal, because he's he wants to what? Oh, we're gonna meet out back and um But Kelso's coming too and they hate each other. I'm confused. Well, I'm not confused. I'm just trying to make sense of it all. I mean, I'm not confused. It's just I'm trying to make it make sense. Kelso, talking to her. Okay, Cole. What were you doing with him? That's what you wanted. I was doing what you asked. I didn't ask you to meet him in an alleyway. Oh, jealousy. Why do you snarl at me? Why do you snarl? Your friend came to ask me to accept the insurance. He's plan. not my friend, Elsa. I think he's a brave man, and you have placed him in great danger. You've involved him in something, and he has no idea of the risk. Can you live with that, Cole? Elsa, I need his help, and he hates my guts. Forget the past, Cole. He deserves a chance to say no. If he helps you, let it be on his terms. I'll go see him in the morning. Okay. Okay. Up. Oh, in the alley, Cole? In the alley? Is he reaching for, to pull her dress up? I think he was. Uh, what are we doing? I don't know what I'm doing. Hold on. Why? Uh, Keystone Film Studios or Elysian Films uh, 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 Elysian Fields Site 2 or the Film Studio. Site 2? We were just at the studio. Oh, he might want to go back for because um, the only people that go there are it, uh, 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 what do you write? I wrote it down. The only guys who go in and out are from there. But we just left there. Well, let's. Okay, well, let's look at site two. I don't know. Corner of. Uh, okay, addition. Uh, housing development. Um, why are we going? Oh, we want to go there and see if they're using the uh, lumber. Oh, good. I don't have to drive. Uh, trying to, I'm trying to make sense of it, and I can. Should I have gone to the... Back to the thing? Because I can't get in here. Should I have gone back to Keystone? I can't get in. Oh, cutscene, though. What is this? Lights from a house. Okay. And somehow we're in? No. 
we're across the street from it, and the game is saying, over here, check me, check me. So what do, okay, uh, I'm trying to make it make sense, and I can't. Flashlight, nice. Thank you, game. Looking for vibrations. No vibrations. Uh, looking to see if the wood has the uh, not for construction on it. Radiator heaters. Um, go up. Go. I got a vibration. What am I getting? What am I getting? Something vibrated. Right. It vibrated. And now it's not. I got a vibration right here. What are we looking for? Something vibrated right here, and then it stopped. Oh, right here. Uh, on this wall behind me. No power. Nice there, wiring. No job, wiring! Please. Keep them in the dark. It's a movie set. Okay, no wiring. Why would you put a cover on it? Um, the cover doesn't get put on until the wiring is in. Oh, vibration. What? Right here. Right here. Oh. Good thing I'm not thirsty. <laughs> there's no pipes. There's no plumbing. Why would you put the fixtures in? Why would you put the fixtures in if there aren't any pipes? Okay, so okay, so we're finding out this is a prop, a, a prop house, like like a movie prop house. Oh, okay, so they're building them on the cheap, burning them down, collecting the uh, insurance. Not smart enough to figure. What is that? There's my car. I I don't think that's the car we started with though. I think I think uh, Jack uh, grabbed a car. <laughs> Cutscene. You lose something, Mac? Oh, oh. I thought these private eye types were all wise guys with smart mouths. Looks like the snappy repartee has all dried up. Oh, get on with it. What's your hurry, Mac? You got some place to go? You ever do the cat and mouse routine without a gun in your hand? Now that's more like it. Let's put a few oh, I put one lights. down, and then I got put down. Time for you to lose some teeth. Nah, you first. Oh. Oops. That's the first time I ever got knocked out. I guess we're supposed guy. to. Cutscene. You're going to take a hint. Get him downstairs and under the trunk. Yeah, I think that was... I don't think there's any way you can win that fight. Uh, well, three against one. If we're in a trunk now, they're going to kill... They're going to kill Kelso? Yet. This is good. This is good. This is good stuff, but I, 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 I can't make sense of it. Sure, he turned up all right. He's wishing he didn't. 
He's in the trunk. He's going nowhere. The boys introduce themselves. <laughs> What do you want done with him, Mr. Monroe? Yeah, I know a good place. You pick good up a place. shovel and a pick on the way. It's up in the hills behind kill Griffith Park. You're gonna kill him? We'll deal with that German bitch next. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, this is getting... Uh, it's getting... Getting good, man. This is a good story, man. But, yeah. Kill Jack. Um, oh, nice, 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 nice. Okay, run, 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 run! I don't have control. It's a cutscene. Run, Elsa. Screw Elsa. Just get out of here. There's a red dot after me. There's three red dots. Can I get the car? Sorry, pal. Desperate times. Yeah, I gotta run. Uh, Elsa's house is to the left. These guys, are they chasing me? Oh, they are! Crap, they're Monroe chasing owns me. the city. Owns the cops. I need to find Elsa. I gotta find Elsa. Ah! How about if I just stay behind them? Huh? They can't shoot at me then. I've got a job to do. They're shooting at me. I need a faster car. Where are they? Is that the last of them? Did I lose them? I lost them. I'll lose him. Can I get a faster car? Okay, we've got to turn around, apparently. Um, can I just have it? Can we park, get out, and then have him? No. Yeah, okay, good. Where are we going? Elsa's. Wow. They worked him over good. Looks like he may have been shot in the arm. Why are we going to Elsa's? Oh! Thank <laughs> you! To protect her, to warn her. And he's kind of attracted to her, isn't he? Big time. Who wouldn't be, right? Oh, Cole. So you're still carrying that Army 45, Cole? Oh. For God's sake, Cole! Call an ambulance! Scene. What? What? I got five stars for what? The truth is out on Elysian Fields despite Leland Monroe's best efforts to bury it. What's going on? What is going on? 
Okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to end the episode here because I'm tired and it's really been long. I just want to get, get to a point. Satchel charges on the cave entrance from above. Covering fire on weapons team. Look for snipers in the trees. That's Castle. You know the drill. No risks, no heroes, no prisoners. You want some roast on this one, Sarge? No, you guys have done enough. Head back to Webs. We are going to blow every cave we come across. Close them down and move on, people. Damn. I was hoping to get me a samurai sword. Skipper says that Phelps has fallen behind again. He's got his fire team's checking every cave. He's lost another flamethrower. He wants you to get over there and hurry them along. Phelps has fallen behind again. Oh, boom. Weapons company. Sir. Sir. We have a major cave complex in front of us, Hogaboom. I want flamethrowers and VAR teams to clean it out. Begging your pardon, sir. But if it's a big complex, why don't we bring the Shermans in? They could pour it in there. We can't wait for tanks to be brought up. I'm already behind. Then blow the cave. No skin off our nose. Bury them We in are it. going in there and clearing them out. We are doing it by the numbers, Sergeant. Ah. Get your team in place. We're moving out. That's his problem. That Man up! His First fire team and flamethrowers! Head in! By the numbers. Where's he going? Where's who going? The big cowboy. He's going in. Who gave that order? You did! A polite invitation. We're going to stop here, though, because it's been a very long video, and I'm tired, and I my head is spinning with all this stuff. Boink. So, I'm going to end it there. We will pick up on uh, what that said. What did that say? A polite invitation? Wow! This game, huh? Wow! All right. I don't know where we go from here. I don't know how we get Monroe. I don't know how we get Fontaine. I don't know how we've been taken off the case. We now have... Um, <laughs> we now have Kelso unconscious in the living room. Uh, Really good story. This is great. This is it's a lot of fun. I love this game, but I want to know that we can uh, get all this untangled, and I don't I don't see a way clear um, because uh, you know all the guys with the power and the clout are the bad guys, and uh, I don't see how we can um, overcome all that. Anyway. Thank you all for watching. Y'all take care. And we will see you on the next one. This is getting really good. Uh, well, it's been good the whole time. I've enjoyed the whole ride. But uh, this is getting uh, quite, a, quite a story. Quite a story. So thank you all for watching. I do appreciate it. We will see you on the next one. Y'all take care.